with us. Just like they were successful during the end time of Paul's life, where this message began to wane off the scene, uh, he's been successful through the centuries. It's almost like, have you ever stepped back and said, why is the world always mad at Israel? Uh, I mean, it makes no sense that the entire world is mad at Israel. But there's something supernatural going on. Why is the body of Christ so against Pauline truth? Because there is a spiritual warfare that's taking place, just like Israel. Ephesians 1, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings, where? In heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. God speaks well of us in Christ and wants believers to live out his praise of us. But Satan tries maliciously to counteract our spiritual blessings with his spiritual wickedness attacking us. Satan produces in us both wrong knowledge and a disorderly walk. He tries to keep us ignorant of the truth and not to walk according to that truth. A walk that is out of line with the mystery and what God is doing in this present dispensation of grace. This in turn gives Satan the chance to carry out his spiritual wickedness. And what is it? Notice where it's underlined there. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our God. What? Night and day. You hear that? Night and day. 1 Peter 5, 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Satan raises up teachers of the word who are deceitful. They are deceitful who counterfeit the word and who keep back the word's true enlightenment with deception. Making it seem like what is being taught is of God. By the way, I'm just saying, why do we have so many denominations? I think Satan's done an unbelievable job. They are using the word. They give the impression they are right, but in reality, they entice, mislead, mislead, and usher in doctrine that is not the truth as God means it to be. Just like over here, you go to Matthew, you know, where two or three are gathered in my presence. I'll be with you. Wait a minute. That was for that time. That's not the day. He's with us all the time. He lives in me. Amen? Amen. Anywhere I go, he's there. I don't have to worry about the Holy Spirit showing up at church. He's in me. Huh? Hello. Where am I? Number one, their teaching, even they have been fooled because they believe it, is contrary to truth, especially Pauline truth for today. Yet this teaching is believed on by most of Christendom. And the verses would be, in whom the God of this world, who is that? Satan, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Then 2 Corinthians 11, 
For such are false apostles, deceitful workers. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. If his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose ends shall be according to their works. You can't believe everybody just because they use the word God. Huh? I mean, you can't do that. There are a lot of people who use the word God. These satanic-led ministers teach smokescreen doctrines to deceive the masses. My question is, has Satan accomplished his purpose? Huh? Has he kept the masses in ignorance? I wrote down the word overwhelmingly. <laughs> Within Christendom, there are false gospels, false doctrines, false gods, false spirits, false prophets, false apostles, false teachers, and false scriptures. Now, I know what you're thinking. You ought to say what you mean, Jim. <laughs> huh? All of these keep true believers from the dispensation of the gospel of grace. Conclusion, and this is an important one. Understand, this rightly dividing is so much more than, than not water baptizing. <laughs> That's the only thing they can focus on. Number one, Paul tells us in Ephesians, neither give place to the devil. Number two, Paul warns us. He says, lest Satan should get an advantage of us. We're not ignorant of his devices. Galatians 3, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Colossians 2, beguile you with enticing words. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy, vain deceit, the tradition, and not after Christ. Romans 16, now this is a great verse here, I like this, most people misread it. I now beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine, now get this, which you have learned and avoid them. What had they learned? Pauline truth. And the ones that aren't teaching Pauline truth are creating division. Mark those people. Hello, They try to say it's anybody who doesn't agree with them. 2 Timothy 3, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Last page. Hey, we made it. You did run well. Who did hinder you? And all this is showing so that they would not obey the truth. It's just showing you that, boy, he works overtime, doesn't he? He's relentless. He doesn't give up. He says, for this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you. Hey, people, he's real. Huh? I mean, he's real. And then third, Paul promises us. He promises us. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Just hang in there. There's coming a day he's going to be under us. Amen? Then I put here, Pastor Jim to you, Colossians. Whereof I am made a minister, according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me to you. To fulfill, that means to complete the word of God. Even the mystery, which had been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect or matured in Christ Jesus. And I say to you again, you cannot be complete, you can't be matured until you get a handle on this and start living this. 
I mean, that's just black and white. Can't say it any, any simpler. Now, what I put there is I put the books of the Bible, and you see the prophetic program, but then you see the mystery program. Prophecy has to do with Israel. The mystery has to do with us, the body of Christ, the mystery program. The book of Acts, you see where I just put them half, that's, the book of Acts is a transitional book. Acts is showing us the fall of Israel and God beginning a new entity called the body of Christ. When we go off the scene, the transitional book is the book of Hebrews. Because they go back over here, they will go back to the Jewish economy, the law and everything. And they go into the tribulation. Okay? Those books at the bottom, those are in particular written to us. Now, we study all these other books too. But I need to always make sure before I make application, I make proper interpretation within context. And you know, I always have to look at the context. I can't just go in there and just grab something and say, that's for me. Just like I heard the preacher today on TV, he says, what's your mountain? What mountain's in front of you? If you have faith of mustard seed, you can say that mountain be removed. It's a faith issue, he says. No, it's not. It's a dispensational issue. <laughs> huh? Okay. A couple minutes for a question. Anybody have a question or just want to make a comment? You're more than welcome. Anybody learn anything tonight? I hope so. If I can get this. There it is. I just wanted to show you this tonight just to show you that we're... We're, uh, we're in a battle and, uh, from spiritual forces. Now, the devil, he uses people. And, uh, but, you know, I think uh, he tells us, though, that uh, our speech is to be seasoned with grace. Uh, he tells us that we ought to be kind, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. In other words, don't allow it to cause you to be upset, mad, angry, bitter, anything like that at all. When you're trying to share something with somebody, just remember where you were the first time you heard this wonderful truth. Just remember where you were. And uh, when it comes, uh, it kind of jars the doctrine, the tradition, the denomination, truths that you've been indoctrinated with for years. And now all of a sudden... Somebody says something contrary. And so when you're talking to somebody, you have to take that in consideration. Uh, it meant to me that I couldn't just go anywhere. I said, oh, you know, I'm going to preach all this passage here and make it to you guys, you know. I can't do that. I can make some application, but I have to get that interpretation properly. Just like today I used uh, for a testimony for us, I used... In, uh, in, in John 12 today, okay, which was good. And by the way, I would use John 3, 16, of course. God's the love of the world, he gave his own. But you see, we know the rest of the story. We know what the cross really did now, don't we? Huh? But in reality, back here, they didn't yet. That was not revealed until Paul comes on the scene. Then Christ revealed to him what the cross accomplished when he was alone with Christ back in that Arabian desert. So they couldn't have known it prior. Hello? You understand what I'm saying? So we can use that, but we're coming from this side here is the fact that we know what actually happened. And uh, Dr. Stam had it right. He says, going through this here, there was a twofold purpose for the work of Christ. The one fold was to the nation of Israel. And the other one that was hidden was to the body of Christ. The one was revealed to Israel because that had been going on since Genesis 12. But the hidden one wasn't revealed until mid-Acts with Paul when it was revealed to him. The cross.
cross accomplished.